hi everyone in uh, today's video i am going to take up a new question in the topic of principles of navigation and the uh, topic is problems on a rising setting and twilight in this regard i will take up a question and then explain the solution to you so here there is an observer who is in a certain uh, latitude that is what you have to calculate later on the sun or the sun's declination is 12 degrees 24 minutes north with a bearing of when you say bore that means bearing of 076 degrees true at theoretical rising there is an importance of this word as well calculate the observer's latitude all right so that is the question now before we start solving the math part of the question let's understand in terms of the rational horizon diagram as to what is happening so that it's very clear to us so what is the rational horizon diagram you just draw a circle like this all right i'm glad it's come out as a circle somehow as a circle then you draw the north south west east so north south west and east these are the directions these are not your poles these are thus the directions right remember that so this is not like the earth sphere the celestial sphere is of unlimited radius we cannot calculate the radius of the celestial sphere so we do not know the latitude of the observer all we know is the sun's declination is north and we know that the sun was bearing 076 degrees so we put the observer firstly at the center so z stands for observer zenith we put the observer at the center we know that the sun's declination is north right so what can we do about that so first we draw the equinoctial what is the equinoctial equinoctial is nothing but the celestial equator so we have the equator on the earth's surface and then we have the equator on the celestial sphere that is called the celestial equator or the equinoctial and then because we know that the sun's declination is north so what we can do is then we can draw the declination circle of the sun north of the equinoctial so this is the declination circle of the sun which has been drawn in red so this is drawn north of the uh, declination north of the equinoctial i'm sorry so the equinoctial is w q e and if i draw the sun's declination north of the equinoctial that means sun's declination is north so we know that the sun's declination is 12 degrees 24 minutes but the sun is at theoretical rising so what does that mean if the sun is at theoretical rising that means the sun is at the rational horizon all right so the sun will normally trace a path from east to west so it rises at east and it sets at west so the path will be the red semicircle or red circle that i have drawn here but if it is still at rising that means the sun has just come up on the rational horizon so just here right now if i join the z and x z x equals to zenith distance all right now what is zenith distance zenith distance is the angular distance of the observer from the sun we cannot work with real distances as we do on land uh, distances on the celestial sphere can't be calculated it's calculated i mean can be calculated but it is calculated in terms of angular distances so every point on the rational horizon every point on the rational horizon from the observer zenith is 90 degrees away right so if z is zx and x is still on the rational horizon this here becomes 90 degrees the side zx becomes 90 degrees all right then we draw the pole here so we are projecting the earth's pole here and we join pzx so when we join pzx it's like a spherical triangle a spherical triangle with a side of 90 degrees not an angle of 90 degrees because the angle that the sun is making with the observer is given to us in the question is 076 degrees so the sun was bearing 076 degrees at theoretical rising right we have pretty much covered all that is given to us so when the sun is on the rational horizon any point on the rational horizon it will be 90 degrees from the observer's zenith so what have we got now we have got something called a spherical triangle all right so we have got a spherical triangle 
and uh, what else is given to us let's see so we have been given right so we have been given the angle z that is 076 we have been given side 90 that's very good now what is px now px is called the polar distance right it is called the polar distance so what is px px here is called the polar distance polar distance now what is polar distance polar distance is of course uh, uh, polar distance is the angular distance of the pole that is the earth's north pole projected onto the celestial sphere angular distance from the pole to the sun so imagine this now now imagine this to be zero degrees which is the equinoctial let's say all right you know the declination of the sun x is here so this declination is 12 degrees and 24 minutes north right and now if i have the earth's pole here p now earth's pole to equinoctial is 90 degrees and x to 0 degrees or x to equinoctial that is the celestial equator is 12 degrees and 24 minutes so what is px px will be equal to 90 degrees minus the declination of the sun isn't it so in this case it will be 90 degrees minus 12 degrees 24 minutes which is nothing but 77 degrees 46 minutes not 46 minutes sorry uh, 77 degrees is it 46 minutes 60 i think it should be 36 minutes not 46 minutes right is it 12 degrees and 24 minutes so it will be 77 degrees and 36 minutes all right so i have to check on my calculator yes that's correct right so we have been given the polar distance as well which is 77 degrees and 36 minutes so if you just type 90 degrees minus 12 degrees 24 minutes you will get 77 degrees 36 minutes that's your polar distance all right 90 degrees minus declination that's why polar distance is always defined as 90 degrees minus declination of the celestial body so now we are given this side as well so we have been given polar distance which is 77 degrees and 36 minutes right so now that we know two things in the right angle triangle it's not a right angle triangle but a quadrant triangle so and so let's draw this triangle again so this is pz this is x here and this is zx here so this is what i have drawn but this is 90 degrees right this is 90 degrees so any spherical triangle with a side of 90 degrees it's called a quadrantal triangle all right so this angle is 76 and this side is 76 77 degrees 36 minutes right now we will solve this using what we call as the napier's rules napier's rules right so how do we do that so we draw a circle cut the circle into two semicircles the top semicircle has two halves the bottom semicircle has three parts we put the 90 degree side outside so what is the 90 degree side zx is equal to 90 degrees all right then we put the angles which are next to zx which are the angles next to zx z and x so we put z and x here then opposite to z we put the side which is opposite to z so opposite to z is the side px but we will write 90 minus px so anything that you write on the bottom of the semicircle on the bottom semicircle you will precede it with 90 minus then what is the side opposite to x it's pz so you will write 90 minus pz and now uh, what is the remaining angle left it is p angle p so i will write 90 minus p here all right so you have to make sure you have included all sides and angles of the triangle so the 90 degree side is outside then the angles next to the 90 degree is z and x then the sides opposite to z and x preceded by a 90 minus and then the remaining angle which is 90 minus p now in this circle what all is given to you you are given z which is 76 degrees and you are given px that is the polar distance as 77 36 what is it that you have to find out so if you find out pz so let's go back here if you find out pz 
Pz is nothing but your angular distance from the pole to the celestial uh, to the observer, right? So this here is pole to celestial observer. So if I find this out, and I know that from pole to celestial e equinoctial or celestial equator is ninety degrees, then ninety degrees minus Pz will give me Zq. Zq is nothing but the latitude of the observer. Right? Now you might so because now Z is north of the equinoctial, we can say that the observer is in north latitude. However, here we are making an assumption that the observer is north latitude. There is no hint given to us in the question where the observer is. Is it north hemisphere or south hemisphere? So here Although the diagram shows the observer to be north of the equinoctial, so we will say north latitude, there is nothing given to us in the question that it is north. So when we find the answer, the answer can be either north or south, but we have to find the value. So let's see how we can do that. So what we have to find out as we realized is Pz. All right. So using, using the Napier's rules, we have to have one middle part and two other parts and we have to make sure two things which are given to us and the one that is not given to us is included in the question. So the formula that we will use is sin of middle part or mid part equals cos of opposites. This is from Napier's rules. I have made number of videos on Napier's rules. So you can watch those videos if you don't know what Napier's rules is. So sin of middle part becomes sin of 90 minus Px. And then cos of opposites becomes cos of z and cos of 90 minus pz. All right, so often my students ask me, how do you know that 90 minus px is the middle part? Well, remember, like I said, I have to include the two parts which is given to me and the one that I want to find out in an equation. So if I want to include z, 90 minus pz and 90 minus px in an equation, this is the only equation I will be able to form. I cannot form any other equation. There is no other probability at all. All right. So sine of 90 minus Px is also equal to cos Px. And this is cos of Z. And cos of 90 minus Pz equals sine of Pz. This is trigonometry. All right. Now Px is given to you. So you have cos of what was Px? 77 degrees 36 minutes am i right 77 36 that's right cos of 77 degrees 36 minutes equals cos of z which is 76 degrees and sine of pz which is something we don't know right or we can say sine of pz keeping it on one side becomes cos of 77 degrees 36 minutes divided by cos of 76 degrees so sine of pz equals, let's find out. Okay, let me put it in the calculator. I don't want to give you any wrong values. Cos of 77 degrees, 36 minutes. And you can do it along with me. So we know that we both have the same answers. So this is 0 0.88762, right? So I go up to five decimal places, gives me reasonable accuracy. And then press shift sine inverse. So pz equals sine inverse of 0 0.88762 so shift sine inverse this gives me pz equals to 62 degrees 34.5 minutes but this is pz all right this is not the latitude this is pz from pole to the observer but latitude is not measured from pole to observer it is measured from equator to observer or equinoctial from observer but i know that pq is 90 degrees now i know pz is how much did i found out 62 34.5 so P, pz is 62 degrees 34.5 minutes so what will be the latitude zq pq minus pz 90 degrees minus 62 34.5 right so latitude of observer which is equal to nothing but zq is equal to pq minus pz so 90 degrees minus 62 degrees 34.5 minutes 
which is equal to 27 degrees 20 see when i try to do mental maths that's when i things start to go wrong so as i'm getting older i'm realizing maybe it's not very good so i hope that's the correct answer so minus 90 degrees right seems like 25.5 that's correct all right so 27 degrees 25.5 minutes now ideally from the assumption i have made the latitude should be north because my z is north of the, the equinox shape. but this was an assumption i made there's no hint given to me in this question whether the observer is north or south so the answer will be north or south it can be either or all right so remember this is a quadrantal spherical triangle that i have solved using the napier's rules make sure you are familiar with napier's rules the hint given to us in the question was it's a theoretical rising so that means the celestial body is on the rational horizon that means zx is 90 degrees and uh, the bearing was given to us and once we knew the declination we could find the polar distance it's always the formula polar distance is 90 degrees minus the declination all right so guys let me know what you thought about this uh, question and whether you understood or not these are rational horizon problems very important for your you all to understand these problems from a navigation point of view these are asked uh, in the exam as well so if there was something you didn't understand make sure you write in the comment section if i don't answer it at least someone else will all right uh, i'll try my best to answer it as well thank you for watching today's video